So for those of you that have been living under a rock, Konami just released a brand new box for Duel Links. But not just any box, a 50 pack permanent box for the game. And within this box, there's a whole bunch of support for things like your Bougians, we've got some new Fire Fist cards, and of course we have the entirety of the Lunar Light archetype, as well as their brand new supporting cards. Meaning this pack is probably the most free-to-play friendly piece of content Konami has ever released for Duel Links. And the best thing about this box, in my opinion, is that although it's cheap, that doesn't actually mean it's weak. Konami decided that they would just not hold back at all when it comes to the brand new Lunalite support they released into this box. They gave us the two most important cards they could have possibly released for Lunalite. And believe me when I say this, it makes this decklist feel really goddamn good. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you are watching this or even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even subscribed yet. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of content or see more deck lists from me in the future or more videos from me in the future, remember to do a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Also a reminder that the brand new Lunar Light skill is coming out in just a couple of days time and when that does come out I'll be doing a separate video showcasing how that skill interacts with this deck list and all the cool stuff you can do with it. So if you want to see that video remember to subscribe so you don't miss out and let's jump into this deck list. Alright so what exactly is new with Lunar Light? Well honestly quite a goddamn lot. This R type got itself four brand new cards and you probably want to play all four of them as they're all really goddamn good. Starting off with the most important one, your Lunar Light Kaleido Chick. Now there is a lot to unpack with this card, so bear with me. First of all, once per turn you can send one Lunar Light monster from your deck or extract to the graveyard, the name of this, this face-up card on the field can be treated as the sent monsters if used as fusion material this turn. So obviously the most obvious part about this card, you can use this effect to send things like your Panther Dance to the graveyard, making it really easy to fusion summon out a Lunar Light Leo Dancer which requires the Panther Dancer without having to rely on something like a Lunar Light Fusion and an extra deck monster on the field. You don't need to rely on that stuff anymore, you can just summon out your boss monster a hell of a lot easier. But there's a lot more to this first effect than meets the eye. The first part is, it's actually sending for cost. This is very important because it means when you use its effect to Foolish Burial something, even when it's negated, you can still use its effect to Foolish Burial things. For example, if, you're, if you summon it back using something like an Emerald Bird, or you summon it back using a Lunar Light Tiger, this thing will have its effect negated, but you can still use the effect to then send a card from your deck to the graveyard. More notably, sending your Yellow Martin, because Yellow Martin can then bounce your things on the field back to your hand for extra resources or for reusing the effect of your Tiger. Very important to note. Also important to note, because it sends for cost, it won't trigger the effects of things like the Emerald Bird to revive or trigger the effect of Crimson Fox to reduce attack. None of that works. You're basically going to be using this thing most of the time to send Martin to the graveyard for its revive effect. And just in case all that wasn't enough, this card also has some bonus effects. If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can target one polymerization in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. And keep in mind, that only applies to that little polymerization search. You can actually use the first effect of this card as many times as you like, as long as you can keep bouncing it back to the field. It's not a hard once per turn. Alright, and finally, if this card is banished, you can activate this effect this turn. Your, opponent, your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated during the battle phase. Not all that relevant, but can sometimes come up if your opponent is playing something like a Drowning Mirror Force or something annoying. Alright, moving on to the next most important card, the Lunar Light Tiger. Once per turn, you can target one Lunar Light monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but it cannot attack, its effects are negated, also it is destroyed during the end phase. And very important thing to note about this card, it's not a hard once per turn. So this will lead to a lot of rank 4 spamming, as you'll see during the replays in this video. This card, you can just bounce it back to your hand using your Martin for essentially just two monster reborns. Very insane card and leads to a lot of value generation. Alright, and then it has an effect on the field which barely ever comes up because you're probably never going to summon this thing. It's also a level 3, so it's kind of awkward to summon it. If this card in the field is destroyed battle or card effect, you can target one Lunar Light, Lunar Light monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Basically don't worry about that at all, you're going to be using the first effect of this thing every single time. 
Next up, we have another very important card for this art type. We have your Lunalite Black Sheep. Now you only need one copy of this, because the essential main use of this card is it turns your tanky into a polymerization searcher, on top of being just a monster searcher, which is a huge problem Lunalite used to face, where it was kind of hard to run a bunch of tech cards because you need to have space for your Lunalite fusion spells and have space for your monster searchers and your monsters in general. But now Fire Formation Tenki could essentially just search for polymerization. Because this card, which is searchable via Tenki, this card simply has an effect where you can discard it to add one polymerization from your deck to your hand. So this is just now a polymerization searcher if you need it. On top of that, of course, polymerization is way more valuable in this deck list than it used to be, because of course your Kaleido Chick can be used for resources to summon out your boss monster really easily. You don't rely so heavily on trying to get a hold of Lunar Light Fusion, and of course your Kaleido Chick can add back polys from the graveyard, so a lot of value generation from just using polymerization now. On top of that, this card, let's just say you've already searched for poly or you don't need poly, you can discard this card to just add a Lunalite monster from your graveyard back to your hand, so extra recursion via that as well. Alright, and the final new addition to this card is your Lunalite Wolf. Now, you only need one copy of Wolf in this deck list because although it's not that easily searchable, it's still quite easy to search. You just send it to the graveyard with something like Kaleido Chick, then whenever you need it, because it is a card that's more of a um, comeback card or a future turn sort of card, you don't really need this on turn 1. But later on in the game, if you have this thing in your graveyard, you can revive it back to the field using something like a Tiger, use the Yellow Martin to add it back to your hand, which you'll see multiple times in the replays, and upon doing so, put this thing in your Pendulum Zone, then you cannot Pendulum Summon monsters except Lunalite monsters, this effect cannot be negated. Once per turn, you can Fusion Summon one Lunalite Fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing Fusion materials listed on it from your field or your graveyard. So it becomes a polymerization that uses the graveyard. Very important, of course, because you can send your uh, Panther Dance to the graveyard now using your Kaleido Chick. I Meaning you can now use this thing with that thing in the graveyard, summon out your boss monster via that way. Or just later on in the game, if you already used all your resources, you can summon out like a Saber Dancer or something instead. Alright, and the monster effect of this is also kind of important, but doesn't come up very often because you don't really want to summon this thing. If a Lunalite Monster you control attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. The only reason this is kind of sort of important now is because this deck list extra deck is sort of really tight, it's hard to cut things. It means you can't run the extra piercing damage some people used to run the extra deck or the monsters that flip things face up for example for extra ways to lethal your opponent. This thing can provide the piercing damage now if you sort of need it, but generally this thing's going to kill your opponent easy anyway. Alright guys, that's going to do it for all the new additions to this deck list. Of course, there's going to be a new skill coming in a couple of days, which will make this deck list even better. But until then, enjoy these replays of me just shitting on kids with the brand new support. Alright, today I've got six absolute banger replays I want to share with you guys. Honestly, these replays felt really goddamn good. I got a lot of good replays against some higher tier deck lists. I got to show off basically everything I wanted to with this deck list, doing all the cool combos and all the cool stuff I wanted to show off. So, I think you guys are going to really enjoy these. And I'm really excited for when the new skill comes out in a couple of days. Considering, I don't think I proc Destiny Draw a single time when playing this. So, just imagine when this deck list, which is already quite good, actually gets a skill for it that makes it even better. Alright, so let's get into it. So this matchup was a 10 new player, and this shows off probably one of the best end fields you can do with this deck list, going for two Xyz monsters on turn one, and still having a little bit of follow up as well. Alright, Emerald Bird going to be discarding the Kaleido, and this was the um, Kaleido chick, and this looks a little bit weird, but essentially, because the Tiger can revive the chick, although the chick's effects are negated, this card sends for cost, so it doesn't actually matter it's negated, I can still use its mill effect. So I got myself a draw, I got to revive my card, and I get to now bounce this thing back to the hand with the Martin. Normally you'd send Martin to the graveyard with this, but thankfully I actually already opened this card, so instead I'm going to send the Wolf instead. Putting Wolf in graveyard is really useful because it essentially searches for the card, because you can easily revive it using things like your Tiger, then easily add it back to hand with things like Martin. So in future turns, I'm not sure if I did it in this one, but in certainly other jewels, it's really good to have this thing in the graveyard just because it's pseudo searched for, you can easily add it back to your hand later. Alright. So first of the Xyz monsters making a Dweller. Detaching, now we can use the, the Tiger because it's not a hard once per turn, we bounce it to our hand for a second revive. Making the Evil Swarm Nightmare. So a pretty formidable end field. I'm going to use the Tanky here to search for the Kaleido Chick. I probably could have saved this card, but it's kind of risky saving a Tanky considering it's a once per turn, so if you draw another one, that feels pretty awful. 
So I decided decide, decided to use it here. But I think in hindsight, I probably should have saved this thing. So if my opponent pops the um pop the tiger here, that would have been pretty bad. So it would mean less follow up in the following turn. All right, so immediately I'm going to use the Abyss Dweller because I know it's against a deck list that absolutely hates Abyss Dweller. So he's probably not going to do much this turn under that. And of course, I've still got the Nightmare to try to flip his things face down. He did dodge one of the bounce effects, but that's completely fine. I'm pretty sure that under Abyss Dweller, he's not doing anything. Alright. Sums out his Monk at the Tenyi. Goes for an Ashina. Goes for a copy of Shaman. Discards, revives. And I think he goes for another Link Summon here. I think, honestly, he probably should have just swung in there and then try to pop the Tiger. Because popping the Tiger would have left me with two Xyz monsters that do absolutely nothing. This one has no attack, no materials. No attack, no materials. So I would have been pretty screwed on lines of play if I don't top deck well. So I don't know. Don't know about that one. Anyway. I'm going to use my Tiger to revive. Martin to bounce. And this is what I was talking about earlier where I put the Wolf in the graveyard. So now Kaleido Chick can change its name to being this card, or no, banish the card from the graveyard that we just put in there. Summoning to the extra monster zone a Leo Dancer, and with the two remaining cards on field, I can make a Tiger. This thing being banished means my opponent can't use any effects during battle phase. Not that it matters, he's very, very, very dead. Yes, that was actually a crazy opening for the deck. You don't get to open that very often, it's essentially a three card sort of combo, but when you do open it, double Xyz on turn one is a very solid opener, especially for a deck that's normally known for being like a going second only deck. This art type used to use just a bunch of hand traps to just survive going first. You don't need that stuff anymore because we actually have a formidable turn one now, we can set up proper Xyz plays. And any time a rank 4 is added to the game, this deck just gets stronger. Alright, up against a Gandora player. Oh yeah, this is another sick replay. So, Gandora gets his full setup. I think he gets the field spell, ends on the 3, has the um, stuff in graveyard. But all I need to do is essentially bait out the only removal this thing sets up. Because it only sets up the one um, re-summon back. And as soon as I get rid of that, by just forcing out with an Abyss Dweller or something, I'm easily just Lunar Light Fusion, he's just dead on field, so... Should be a fairly easy matchup, I just need to try to go for any rank 4 to try to get into the Abyss Dweller, and then we're good to go. As long as I have Lunar Light Fusion as well. Which is pretty easily searched for in this deck. And with the brand new skill, it actually becomes even easier to search, considering you can turn Polymerization into this card. And you can search for a Polymerization now. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to set up the Abyss Dweller. Just do whatever I can to try to get there. Alright, Tiger to summon back this card. That'll give me two level fours. Martin going to be bouncing beforehand so I get a little bit of extra resources. Summoning the Abyss Dweller. And this forced him to use his effects. He was, he was stupid enough not to use the Harp actually. Because he should have used the Harp before the Abyss Dweller was even summoned. I just had two level fours on the field. Because now, even if he sum adds the... um. I forgot what the symbol is to the, the graveyard. It'd be too late, the Abyssal Effect's already gone off, and he can't summon the Evening Star. Not that he matter, because even if he could summon Evening Star, he'd just get rid of the Abyss Dweller, and he'd still be dead anyway. <laughs> Alright, he's got some extra eight monsters on the field, so I can easily just summon out a copy of Leo Dancer, and that's just dead on field. I could even force him to reduce the attack of this by um, going for a tribute. Hit that, nuke the field, hit him in the face, gone. Absolute banger replay that one. Yeah, going into rank 4s with this deck now, it is very easy. It was already pretty easy to go into rank 4s with Lunar Light, but now it's, especially going to rank 4s before the fusion summoning, before when you wanted to try to go for fusion summoning, or exceed summoning Lunar Light, you sort of had to go for fusion summoning first to try to trigger your um, Emerald Birds effect. But now you can just do it all before then, which is sick. Alright, up against Tomu753. Playing Magistus. And he set up a pretty decent feel, but unfortunately he just... This guy just went... Creates a yes on every single effect negation possible. He didn't wait at all. I think I still could have broken his board even if he did use the stuff at the right time, but the fact that he didn't just made things even easier. Alright, so he's going to do a whole lot of cool magic stuff. It's a shame too, because this guy actually still has a really nice field. 
I didn't end up making the Magic E video. I probably should have. The thing that kind of kept me away from this deck is it's turn two is so bad. It's basically a turn one only deck. Alright. So I'm going to take my Tenki, searching for my Emerald Bird. Bird, discard. He then uses this on the bird for some reason. Bird likes being removed to the graveyard, so it revives the chick. Interesting. Alright, as I said before, this thing being sent for cost. Oh, it doesn't actually matter that it's negated, so I'm going to send things to the graveyard. Rebounce them. Tiger going to revive. He negates the tiger, which is like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just fusion summon now then. <laughs> After I get some resources back, of course. I need the, uh... Might as well get the resources back while I can. Not sure why I kept the monster on the field. Probably should have used the one on the field. Not that it matters, he's just dead already. Hit that one, nuke the field, and hit him in the face. Actually, he didn't kill him, never mind. <laughs> Either way, he's like, this deck just has like zero follow up, so. Alright, then we had Sack. Alright. A little weird word to say out loud like that, but anyway. <laughs> just move past that. Alright, Jade and New Bell. So there's a little bit of an awkward situation with this art type. This deck has Super Poly, so your fusion monster gets really screwed over by it. So it's important to try to get rid of the back row if you can before going for it. So things like your, um, if you want to play Nightmare Phoenix, you can do that. There's also Xyz monsters you can play that can also target back row. Also kind of important. But yeah, I decided for Nightmare Phoenix, so I'm sick of people activating things in response to my, um, Xyz summon. Plus, having the ability to get both your two level 4s in the graveyard right at the start makes it really easy to actually combo with this deck list. It's another reason when the skill comes along why it's going to be so good, as you can fill up your graveyard a lot easier. Right, it's kind of hard to explain that until you've actually played the deck list, but you'll notice that it's a lot easier to sort of play the game once you have a lot of cards in your graveyard, rather than just, um... Yeah, one, rather than trying to detach them from your Xyz monsters, especially going first. That's why you'll notice with the um, first combo, you have to use your Dweller and detach the material on turn one, despite nothing being there, just so you need more materials in Graveyard. <laughs> Alright, I'll start raving on now, we can actually watch the replay. So this guy was playing Double Summon. I just have a pretty formidable end field, but only one lot of back row, so we can easily get rid of that, um... Easily get rid of that. Alright, Tiger going to be bouncing. Chick can be sending, reviving. Also, going for the Link Monster first, of course. Like I said, get rid of the Super Poly because it's annoying. He just decides to not even use it. Too far, only had a Fire Monster on the field, so. Tiger bouncing, Clyro Chick sending. This Clyro Chick's also not a hard one per turn. Probably well, shouldn't have sent this. I think I didn't even send the Wolf. Oh, yeah, the Wolf's in hand, that's why. Oh, you also notice here, by the way. Yeah, I put the tanky in the stupid scale. Keep that in mind, you're playing a tank that plays pendulum cards, they need to go in the pendulum scale. So, um, yeah, this tanky should have been in the middle here, so I could have technically used the wolf's effect if I wanted to here, rather than, um, hard summoning dancer from hand. Not that it mattered, he's still dead either way, but... Just for future reference, put tankies in the middle when you have them, so you have your scales free. When you can, of course. Sometimes use multiple tankies. Oh yeah, his full field has been negated by the, um... Tiger King summons, so this card does absolutely nothing. He's dead. Alright. I think the only actual main weakness I've noticed with this deck is the actual extra deck size itself could be super awkward. There's a lot more rank 4s I want to play in here, but you just do not have the space. Like, I really want to play something like Malevolent Sin or just a target 1 remove. But there's just no room for it if you still want to play the stuff that I'm playing. Because this card, even if it was still a, um, an Xyz monster, it'd still be one that's more aimed at back row anyway. I am playing... Oh yeah, this is before I added Abyssal to the deck. So you'll notice that I'm up against uh, this, this archetype, which you really want Abyssal for. And this is before I added it, because I was trying to make room for this card. But after a while, I sort of realised Abyssal is just a must for this deck, so I cu cut this boy in favour of it. But it made this matchup more interesting, because normally you just abyss well this art type and they have a lot of a, a lot more of a hard time. In this case we go for a Saber Dancer. Emerald Bird, revive. Tiger gonna be bouncing or reviving. 
And there's a rank 4. It's a bit of a different turn 1 this time. Normally you'd go for a Bistwell, but I'd have it in here, so I just start summon this thing instead. This thing is really hard for your opponent to out, by the way. Because all this deck has to out it is generally going to be their... Uh, this thing. You can give me on, you can attach the... The Haram, how you pronounce this thing. You can technically out this thing. Flip both these monsters face down, though. You normally just abyss well this and you couldn't summon like anything. <laughs> Alright, Tiger gonna be reviving. Yellow Martin gonna be bouncing back to hand. Clyro Chick setting to the graveyard so I can now use the wolf's effect. Summoning out the Leo Dancer. Who's seen the shit out of Leo Dancer? And he's dead on field. I think the other replay too, the final one, is the exact same gameplay, or very similar. It's a BLS player, I didn't have a Abyss Dweller yet, so I was just going for very similar plays. I think I actually do do the Fusion Summon into a C Summon on turn 1. Alright. So Emerald Bird discarding, grabbing a top deck of a Tenki, so I can grab the Kaleido Chick. I'm gonna use this to revive. Then you go for a Fusion Summon first. Alright, reviving once. Kaleido Chick's gonna be able to add back the Poly. Kaleido Chick can then send the Martin. Revive the Martin. I could even summon the tiger here and revive again, but decides there's no real point, so he sends his pass. Unfortunately, he has a Book of Moon. Alright. And thankfully, he wasn't able to kill me here. He was only able to do the Endymion to remove this. Alright, so he's gonna use Lance here. That does absolutely nothing for me. Don't care. Basically just stops my wolf effect. Martin will be bouncing. I have a poly in hand. Clio Chick can now send the um, dude. Which is fantastic because this, this is not a good showing by the way of um, how this deck got buffed. This card itself, just being able to make it so that if your opponent has no extra deck monster on field, you can just summon out this thing really easily anyway just by changing this card's name. Absolutely huge buff for the deck. Chick adding back to Polly, Martin adding back. Oh my god, the chain. I had like two seconds left on the clock, by the way, if you're wondering why I added back the Crimson Fox over something else. But yeah, you can see it instantly was over. Alright, guys, that's gonna do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Remember, when the new skill arrives in a couple of days, I'll be uploading another video, again, using the same, probably the same deck list, I imagine, with a new skill, showing off just what it can do for the art type. So remember to leave a like, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on that content. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.